Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Today we're talking about one Anthony Taylor and he, how he seemingly, in, a court, and in my opinion, lost control of yesterday's London derby between Chelsea and Tottenham. Of course, if you haven't seen it already, well, how could you not have seen it yesterday and how could you not have talked about anything else other than what happened yesterday between these two sides? Because it was very controversial, it was very debatable, it was very questionable as to Anthony Taylor's refereeing of yesterday's game uh, between Tottenham and Chelsea, which of course finished 2-2 at Stamford Bridge, a game in which Ch uh, Tottenham fought back twice um, from to get a point, a smash and grab point, because in my opinion, it was a pretty underwhelming and poor performance from Tottenham in which they managed to get a smash and grab from this game. It was a fiery encounter as we'd expect. We always talk about the Battle of the Bridge of years ago when we talk about these two teams facing off against each other. It was yet another fiery encounter, another feisty chapter in this long and bitter rivalry between these two bitter rivals. Um, but the controversy surrounding this game all stems from one Anthony Taylor, who was of course the referee on this occasion. And, and he's found himself in the crosshairs of a lot of Chelsea supporters who are very angry about the decisions that that particular referee made. And I think in all honesty, they may have a case for that. We're obviously gonna be talking about this. I would, I would say right now that I would have saved this for obviously tomorrow's Premier League Fallout video that I was gonna do when obviously all the Premier League teams play with Liverpool and Crystal Palace playing tonight. But I think that I can talk about this a lot. So I think that this deserves a, a video on its own and we're gonna be talking about it and talking about the game and everything. But before we get into all of that, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both things are always on the would be greatly appreciated. But for now, let's get into the video because Yesterday's game between these two sides was a very interesting, exciting and intriguing game. For the neutrals, it was a superb game to watch. It was a feisty derby, as you'd expect from these two. It was, uh, it, it was a game in which I believe Chelsea dominated for large parts. I think Chelsea played very well. They set up very well. They were disciplined. They were resolute. They had a game plan and it worked to almost perfection i'd say i'd say it was almost perfect the way that they went about their business and their game plan to not only neutralize tottenham's main threats but to also uh, do some damage themselves and i think it was very good on thomas tuchel's part especially because a lot of people were thinking including myself that chelsea weren't prepared chelsea weren't um we're gonna falter at the bridge chelsea were gonna lose bragging rights at the bridge to tottenham because we all thought that tottenham Played very well last week. I know it was against Southampton, but we thought they played very well. They had a good transfer window. And we thought that they were building something really big under Antonio Conte. That this game would display how far they had come under the Italian since, obviously, he took charge of them. But it was different. Chelsea were very, very good. Tottenham were very, very poor. And Tottenham can consider themselves very, very lucky and relieved to be coming away from this game with a point, with all things considered, with everything that happened in the game. Well, Chelsea, of course, can feel very hard done by and very frustrated that from a couple of winning positions, they didn't manage to get the job done through, yes, you could say a little bit of fault of their own because they did miss some very decent chances. Kai Havertz, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the guilty party in that, shall we say. He missed a couple of very good chances. That one that Reese James put on an absolute plate for him uh, is absolute criminal in my opinion. I do not know how Kai Havertz managed to miss that chance in the second half. It was so, so good from Reese James and Havertz just couldn't hit the target. It kind of highlighted the problems that I've talked about with Chelsea a lot across the summer that they need a more recognized and prolific striker. Kai Havertz, for me, just doesn't cut it as the false number nine. He's okay in some areas. Finishing-wise, he was absolutely atrocious yesterday. Um, just from that one chance alone, I'd say. Um, but yes, Chelsea can feel frustrated. Tottenham can feel relieved. They got a point when they probably didn't deserve it based off how the game went. 
And, you know, a lot of that stems from the referee. For the first, for the first goal, both incidents that I'm going to be talking about happened for both Tottenham goals. For the first incident, um, it was Hoybier's goal. The build-up play to it started from a challenge by a Spurs player on Havertz. Now, it was seen that Havertz was fouled. From a, from an issue from from the from, from live viewing, it seemed that Havertz was fouled. Tottenham then build up. The ball falls to Jorginho. He fails to clear it. Tottenham win the ball back. Hoybier fires Spurs on on level terms. Now, the goal was allowed to stand despite obviously this sparking scenes on the touchline between both uh, between both sides and their managers and their coaches and everything. The goal was allowed to stand, and the reason seemingly for that was because enough time had passed and Chelsea were in control of the ball during that time to obviously um, allow the ball to stand and be a, a different phase of play. To me, it is kind of a foul because although the Spurs player, and I have watched it back, the Spurs player does make contact with the ball first. But from the angle that he makes the challenge in, he makes contact with the ball and then he makes contact with the man. And to me, I've seen plenty of examples this past weekend alone, particularly in the Aston Villa versus uh, Everton game, in which a, tr a challenge is made like that, but a foul is still given anyway. And this one is obviously, there's got a lot more weighing on it because obviously this one leads to a goal. I don't think any challenge like that kind of happened in that game that led to a goal, but there's a lot more riding on it because it led to a goal. For me, it is kind of a foul, but I can also see why it wasn't given. You're never going to have 100% consistency. I get that and I understand that. What's clear and obvious to me might not be clear and obvious to you and vice versa. So you're never going to have 100% complete uh, consistency within the game. I completely get that. Despite VAR's interference, despite having linesmen there, despite having referees there, you're never going to get 100% consistency. And that is something that we all have to completely understand. Um, but like I say, that challenge could have gone 50-50. It could have been given straight there and then. And people are saying that, uh, I think I believe it was Benzinka that did the challenge. I believe some of the people are saying that with the way that he reacted afterwards, he believed it was going to be a foul before obviously the referee decided to play on. Um, and then from there, of course, Ball breaks the Hoybier after 45 seconds or so of build-up play, uh, and he fires Spurs back on level terms. Now, as he's shot, the ball is kind of cut across the the, uh, the box a little bit to the far corner. Richarlison is stood there. He's not technically interfering with play. He is more passive. He doesn't make uh, a, a contact with the ball at all or anything. The question then is, is Richarlison... Um, blocking Mendy's eye line or anything, or is he in the corner of his eye so that Mendy kind of sort of reacts to him or anything? He's seen as being passive. Again, another reason why the goal stands is that he's seen as being passive, he's not interfering with play. But again, I've seen those not given. I've seen goals like that happen where it seems fine, and then they catch a player who's offside, he's not technically interfering with play, but I have seen that those goals have been chalked off in the past. So again, I do feel like Chelsea can be feeling a bit hard done by in that respect for both of those incidents leading uh, to that first goal. But the second one is the big one. The first one is 50-50, in my opinion, more or less. You know, more or less. Um, but the second one is a big one because the second one, there is no justification. There's no excuses to why Anthony Taylor missed this one. Um, the first Spurs corner that they had um, towards the end of the game was put out for another corner. But during it, obviously at this time the scenario is, is that Chelsea are 2-1 up, Spurs are pushing for a late equaliser, Spurs have a corner, it goes out for another corner, and then the incident between Christian Romero and Mark Cucurella happens. Romero is seen pulling Cucurella's hair. That's a salt. Plain and simple, it's that's like assault where there's no justification as to why he's battling for it. He's got a hold of his hair and he's pulling it. It's a ridiculous move by the defender. It's something that 
with a referee standing in point blank range by the way he's pretty much looking at the incident from behind there's nothing interfering with his vision there's no one blocking it he's looking straight at it with linesman there as well and of course with var no one has said anything the incident's just allowed to continue everything's allowed to continue spurs are allowed to take the second corner which obviously they score from and again chelsea that time can feel really hard done by now i don't know whether the rules state that chelsea should have got a free kick from that they chose to get a free kick from that they see the game out 2-1 obviously the ripple effect means that if the referee sees it decides to do something about it probably send off Romero, in all honesty. Although he didn't have anything to do with the goal, maybe it creates a ripple effect in which Chelsea feel vindicated and justified, and maybe Chelsea did go on to defend the corner properly. It's a ripple effect, it's the butterfly effect, it's, it's, it is whatever it is. But it was stupid. It, it's stupid because, like I say, from the replay, Anthony Taylor is in point blank range looking at the incident. And he doesn't see it, he doesn't think to do anything about it. He just sees Romero pulling Cucurella's hair and decides to continue the game from the Spurs corner. Baffling to me. Absolutely baffling that that was allowed to happen. And like I say, of course, Spurs get the equaliser from that resulting corner. I'll reiterate, this game was superb to watch from neutral point of view. Even at full time, where Tuchel and Conte go to sort of shake hands and Tuchel just goes a bit over the top and everything and gets a bit feisty down on the touchline yet again and the fire fireworks all kick off and everything. That makes for good TV. That makes for a good spectacle. That makes it box office. That was what makes this rivalry so intense and so great to watch. From a neutral, it's great. If you're a Chelsea fan, you feel hard done by and you feel frustrated because, yes, you couldn't finish your dinner in front of goal. You couldn't finish your dinner on the day. You did miss a few chances, but you still managed to score a couple of goals. And Chelsea and Spurs didn't look threatening for a large part of the game. You looked pretty comfortable defensively, did Chelsea. And then from a few debatable and controversial refereeing decisions, all of a sudden Spurs are put back into the game and Spurs perform a smash and grab by snatching a point from this game. From their perspective, Spurs will try and spin it. Spurs will say that they had a stronger mentality than they would have had in previous years. They didn't crumble when, obviously, uh, Chelsea retook the lead. They didn't crumble when when they went 1-0 down in the first place. They, they went to the very, very end and they managed to fight back. They managed to get the point, get the equalising goal, get the point. And they managed to take a point from, obviously, a, a an away day, which isn't the most favourable towards them. Chelsea away is notoriously not good for Tottenham. They don't really have a good record there, to say the least. But they went to a difficult away away day. They got a point against a bitter rival, a rival for top four. And they'll be happy with that. They'll be happy with the start of the season that they've had. It's perfect. It's almost perfect, I suppose. Almost perfect. But for Chelsea, like I say, they'll feel hard done by. They'll feel Anthony Taylor has a lot to answer for. And they'll feel extremely frustrated because the incidents that took place were extremely baffling as to why the referee just didn't decide to get to award Chelsea anything within those. It's clear to me, in my opinion, that Anthony Taylor lost control of that game. Anthony Taylor did lose control of that game. And the worst part about it is, is that if you're if you're being told that you're going to be refereeing this kind of game, you know that it's a feisty derby. You know that this is an intense uh, atmosphere that you're going to be walking into. You know that this is um, a very, very notorious derby. Everyone references the Battle of the Bridge years ago, as I previously mentioned. And you know that this is a very bitter rivalry. You've got to try and stamp your authority on this game as quickly as possible, in my opinion. And he did try and let a lot of things go, which we often criticise referees for. But he seemed to let too much go. 
And the moment that he realised he had let too much go was obviously when it reached boiling point, it boiled over and even the managers and the coaches were getting involved on the touchline. And then from there, to me at least, he simply lost control of the entire game as a whole. And that's when he started making stupid decisions. And like I said, I don't for the life of me understand how he didn't see the Romero and Cucurella incident. He's staring right at it. He's genuinely staring right at it. He can see that Romero's got his hands all over him and he yanks him by the hair for Cucurella to go over and he doesn't do anything about it. For the first goal, don't get me wrong, that one's, that one's controversial in itself. That one's 50-50 because like I say, for the offside appeal, for the, uh, for the foul that led up to the build-up play, I've seen those types of goals not given. I've seen those goals be chalked off. That one's 50-50, but the other one, I don't think there's any excuses, any justification as to what happened between the referee and VAR as to why that wasn't given. Just absolutely baffled me, in my opinion. I do not understand how that wasn't given. Um, and like I say, Chelsea will feel really hard done by. For, for Chelsea, it will feel more like a loss. For Spurs, it will feel more like a more like a win. I can completely understand that. I think it's a it's an it's an amazing point for Spurs at the end of the day. It's an amazing point for Spurs that they go to an away day like like I say is not favourable to them in the slightest, and they turn up and they get a point by any means necessary. So it's a very good point for Spurs. Chelsea can feel hard done by, but again, it's incredible to see that the standard of refereeing hasn't quite improved, and especially from Anthony Taylor, who is now one of the veterans of, of Premier League refereeing, shall we say, um, that he, once again, he's at the centre of a number of controversy, he's at the centre again of some bad refereeing, and if I was Chelsea, I'd be asking questions of the referee, asking questions of the FA as to what the referee saw and why he didn't give the Cucurella one in particular. But to me, this only strengthens the case that referees need to come out and justify their actions, need to come out and justify why they made certain calls, need to come out and justify why they made certain decisions. This only strengthens that case, that argument, in my opinion, because like I say, in my opinion, Anthony Taylor lost complete control of this game. Chelsea will feel hard done by for Spurs. They get a point. They're probably jubilant at that, uh, that point. Just another day in the Premier League. But of course, as I always say, this is just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of yesterday's game between Chelsea and Tottenham at Stamford Bridge? Were Chelsea hard done by? Do you feel that Anthony Taylor got the decisions wrong? Do you think he got the decisions right? How are you feeling if you're a Chelsea fan, if you're a Tottenham fan, or even if you're a rival or a neutral fan? What do you make of yesterday's game? I'd love to read your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it down below in the comment section, because I'm sure it'll make for interesting reading. Otherwise, hit that like button on the way out if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things are always and be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. And I will see you all again soon in another video.